Greeting from the Underdoom. I'm Dar, the Earth of Mithras, ready to unbox the Underdoom. The largest encounter we've ever made. So large, it's two whole boxes. It's, it's crazy, it's outrageous. Encounter 14 of Camera Steep. Let's see what lurks in these dark, dark depths of the Underdoom. Oh my god, there's boxes within boxes within boxes. What are we gonna do first? Oh, it's something big until I get, oh, look at this core. Holy moly. This core pack is like, I can't even get to it. There's so many boxes. This is like a team our Durgar would have to mine for a decade to get another board knife to make all these boxes. Oh, and there's terrain trees on the bottom. That's why it's so heavy. Oh. Boom, boom. All right, let me start with this core. Look at that, these are all the core pieces. That's huge, that's bigger than some of the other encounters, just the core pieces. That rages. Thank you for your support. Same thing we've been using since KS1. This thing is, this is gonna be the last one. All the new ones are gonna be in uh, Dread Hollow. The last one you'll ever see. All right, whoa, inner box, wow. All right. We have boxes within boxes within boxes. The Underdoom section. Luckily it's indestructible, nearly. All right, what are we gonna open first of these inner boxes? It's just something big and beefy to like kick open the door with. Um, oh yeah, there's a, is that the ramp? Yeah, yeah. All right, let's see what's big. This has got big pieces. Let's get some big pieces cooking. Ah, look at that light. So, whoa. These massive boys, these two of these things. You see, and look at this. So these, these glorious, deep purple, crazy yellow passage pieces. And if you've got a shelf of black light, oh, check that out. Does that read on camera? Mm -hmm. Can you see? Yeah, look at that. In fact, you know what? This is this purple. We we agonize over this purple and blue thing, but you know. It's so moody down here in the Underdoom, you can't really see the Underdoom in the Underdoom. So you know what? So if it works some illusions, let there be light! Yes! Thank you, Mace. <laughs> She's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, all right, so this is what they actually look like in real life. In real life. Look at that. Those beautiful pieces. Beautiful. The banks have like a little, uh, Iridescent purple on the edges. There's, yeah, I know it's a fun fact. I don't know if everyone knows, but I love purple. King of all colors. And blue and red. And, but really purple is where it's at. Aaron said this went through the most orange. iterations of any paint scheme. I think the actual, the, the vile mushrooms, I think we did like 20 different passes on the mushrooms till we got there. But the, yeah, of, like of terrain paint, this was like, this was agony. Like it took a long time to mess around. Well, it needed to look cool and it needed to, it's just, it needed to be exotic. It needed to be dark. It needed, it had a lot of needs. Yeah, look at all these Banks pieces. Okay, that's our piece. It's gonna take forever. We have a lot. This is, this is, this encounter is just outrageous. the magic. All right, so you'll notice in here, and we got some regular pieces. The stilts all come in regular paint. We uh, we just, the poor factory, like we had so much we were throwing at them. Uh, so many different parts, so many different paint schemes. So we, had we had unpainted, regular paint, ice paint, underdoom paint. It was just so many options, so many sets, they were losing money. It was like something absurd, like you know, six or eight hundred skews when it was all said and done. It was, like, it was just outrageous. So, uh, we left the, uh, the stilts only come in regular paint. They do not come in underdoom paint because when you build with them, they're buried in there anyway. And if we tried to do it, the factory would have exploded. So, you know, better to have something than nothing. And uh, they work great, and they're always good. All right, so, wow, look at all this. I'm glad we've been speaking. Should pop on the train train. Oh, yeah. We're gonna, oh, I should have done all that first so I can prove the... Uh, Paved the table. Not too late. No, it's not. It's never too late. No regrets. All right, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna show you how this train is. Wow, this is like a head. You could do, uh, you could do some reps. 
base. Get your get my get my strength up from like an eleven to a twelve, maybe. Okay, then. You ever try and like give yourself D and D stats in real life? Like everybody just always Every wants day. to rate themselves way higher than they should be. Because uh, I feel like I have a high self, but my wife will tell you I just like I'm the loudest, least stealthy person ever, and uh, I, I think I have decent wisdom. Charisma. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Uh, Christmas my, is probably your highest. My persuasion check failed there. <laughs> yeah. Roll better. Yeah. Jeez, these are keep, they just keep coming. There's so many three trays. All right. So look at these beauties. This is necrotic sludge, inspired by Van Gogh. It's the starry sky. This swirling, bubbling, gnarly sludge there. It's like, it could be an evil river on the ground. It could be a kind of sludge. It could be, um, it could be, you know, it could be a giant pit of black pudding. You know, there's lots of, lots of options. Uh, and then the other side is the bottomless abyss. So it's like kind of stony edge and then it just goes into black. It's, it looks really good. And it's a really black, black. We use this under the, uh, the Lost Odyssey build we did for Deborah Ann Wall. Uh, all right, so let's put this stuff down. So we're going to build purple on top of purple. It's like a hat on a hat, purple exception. Um, so much purple in one place. Look at all these pieces. Ooh. There's just going to be an absolute mound of pieces on this table. Um, then we're going to flip the table. Ha! Huh. No. It was, so we, uh, I don't know if anybody's been watching the internet, but we were at PAX Unplugged uh, this last weekend, uh, which was just an unbelievable experience, such a good community. We got to see a lot of you guys, the Caverns Deep backers there, and you were telling us how much you love the pieces, and showing us what you build, and your cool autumn paint schemes, and all sorts of greatness. Uh, and we built this very, very elaborate, but small, it was a four foot by two foot build, like really detailed build, spent two days like pre, Building it, sit up there, dripping with minis, every like as many different pieces as possible, wildly elaborate, beautifully detailed thing, like agonized over this thing. And then when the convention was over, flipped the table, <laughs> flipped it up, poured it down into a uh, into a, a waiting blanket, uh, so we could just dump it into boxes and get out of there in record time. You can see the video on Twitter and Facebook yeah. and Instagram, but maybe YouTube. Did. We, uh, we did remove the fragile LEDs uh, before, and the prototypes before we flipped it over um, because they are not indestructible like the rest of our Dwarvenite. Uh, yeah, it, was, it got uh, mixed reactions on the, uh, the interwebs. Some people uh, were a little appalled to see us like dump a table of like, I don't know, $4,000 for the Dwarvenite. But it's a uh, convention does crazy things to you. And so far, I don't think we've discovered anything destroyed. Mm -hmm. Mm -mm. Yeah. Oh, I wait. think Tyler's done sorting it. Is he? Yeah. Yeah. So we, uh, no harm, no foul. Other than a few heart attacks. So we got more little terrain trays. Jeez, just keep going on and on. Four by eight These terrain are, trays. This is a cliff pack? Yeah. I'll get to that one in a second. I, I'm reversing. I'm going backwards to the uh, rest of the terrain trays. We have so many terrain trays. Oh, look at this. This is a neat little six by six. So those are... Mm. Ah. Look at that. Like six by six. And this is a really cool for like just a little pit. Six by six pit. And these four by eights. Also good for ravine on this side. And, oh yeah. Let me go this way. So you can put the uh, magnets of the stilts on here. Boom. And then these things float. And you can build your cliffs. Look at these cliff pieces. Ooh. Those big cliffs right up to it. And now everything's like the right height to build a second layer. And this saves you a whole bunch of cash. You don't need to uh, have even more dwarven items there. All right. These, lots of cliffs, these little boys. Oh, what's next? More trifecta terrain. Yeah. 
Never, uh, never again are we gonna do an encounter as big as the under, or with as many pieces as the under doom. Okay, you've heard it here on film in public. Uh, I think it was a little too crazy the under doom. Uh, so many, so many pieces. Uh, I'm not, you know, we might have things that have equal or even larger table coverage, but not as many interesting pieces. Like I don't know how many interesting pieces are in it, but it's it's ridiculous. Plus, it means this like unboxing video is gonna be like nine hours long. Do people watch an entire? Is like anybody gonna watch this whole video? Comment below. Here's the thing: if you yeah, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna say something near the end of the video, and if you if you get to the very end of the video, and you watch the whole thing, and you say that thing in the comment, it means we'll know you've watched the whole video. Uh, and Selena, you're gonna have to remind me to say something at the end. Okay. Um, we got all these these uh, trifecta. They sit like this. You can, you can build it as a wall. You can build it as a ledge. You can build it as a negative space ledge. You get a lot of, lot of options. Three ways to build with the trifecta pieces. Where's the flashlight? No idea. Whoa, look at that. Oh, look at this context. This, I love this piece. By the way, one of my, I say it at all the time, one of my favorite pieces of the... Uh, Campaign, just that this nice curve, just a good, good one. Uh, basically, one of the goals with the Underdoom was to give you enough in one encounter, give you enough pieces, bread and butter pieces plus fun pieces to um, to just sort of build whatever the heck you need. Like it was like it just a it just a cavern deep greatest hits all in one place. Uh, so you could just, you know, have everything to build all sorts of crazy under doom encounters. These are the stuff. Oh, speaking of, some guy, uh, one of our wonderful backers at, came up and visited us at PAX and said, can you just say bread and butter for me in person? <laughs> he's, like, I love it. he's like, he's saying all these, these videos, the bread and butter pieces, the bread and butter pieces. So he's like, can you just say it for me? And uh, I think he might have even recorded it for him so he could show his friends and his D&D group. And it was, uh, yeah, I do love me some good bread and butter pieces. Just basic building blocks. Never have enough. All right, so look at all these stalactites, a whole family, a whole variety. You got your corner fills, your little guys, your little lumps. Oof. Man, more trifecta. I'm gonna do it. Now, in the warm light, it does make it look red. Well, that's, that's one of the challenges of this stuff is it doesn't photograph. It's hard to tell what color it is because it just it changes depending on the light. Like, it actually even looks more blue in here than uh, it often it feels more purple. It's, you know what? It's the magic and the mystery of the underdew. What color is it? You may never know. Uh, oh, the dwarven bane on the back of that. It's just, I'm so happy with how that color worked out with this interference patterns and the like. Yeah. All right, so we have even more trifecta pieces. So many, like, just a huge mound of trifecta. Thanks, stalactites. Guess what? More stalactites. Oh wait, these are stalagmites, not stalactites. Can't even, because you might. guys can look, the little guy can look with the big guy, they can spoon in there, if you want. These guys also, you can put on the table like that to make a thing, you can do a little thing like that, or four of these. Lots of fun ways to play with these guys. You can make like a weird pillar with four of these if you want. So that you want to do that. These big guys, what do they look like under... Someone's gonna, somebody, please send us a photo of your like crazy black light table setup, whoever you are out there, if you're watching. Social handles are in the description. 
Tag. All right, what do we have next? Ooh, Rising Walls. Oh, I love these ones. I mean, I guess I love all of it, but I really do. I mean, this is, we really, we agonized so long on this stuff and uh, really poured everything into these. There's, there's a lot of love in these pieces. And you know what? We kept hearing it at PAX. All the love you guys were like, oh, I love my new pieces. I'm so excited. It's coming in bits and drabs and I just get new. It's like Christmas keeps coming over and over again. These guys, these rising walls, they come together like this. You can do a thing like this. Put this thing together. There, you can do, here's a little gag. You can put those guys together. And the rising flag might. You have like a little, this little rising thing there. Boom. More rising, more rising elevation. We haven't even gotten, there's a whole second giant box too. We're like, we're working through it. We're cutting through the ranks. It's like the Legolas mowing down orcs. We're uh, getting there. Check the elevation blocks. More rises. Oh, here's another thing I like to do with these guys. You can put these guys, you're doing like a convex corner, you can do those guys. And this and do a thing like that gets you a convex corner around your room. Get that. Oh, this guy's fun. Nice. Did we have? Oh man. Ooh, here's we need some bread and butter pieces here. This is inner box Drink. number two. Drink. Oh, the Dwarven Forge uh, hands-on demo drinking game. Yep. All right. So it's a, what are the things you drink for when I say bread and bread butter? And butter. I love this piece. I love this. I love this X, Y, and Z, whatever it may be. Uh, here's a neat little trick. Um, mm. uh, Something about trifecta. Yeah. Just possibilities. We're just showing oh, possibilities. possibilities. It's just, you know, so many ways to build. There's just a few possibilities. Uh, so we got, oh man. So we have lots of little, uh, I, you know what? You can put in the comments some other things, other what other things you would do in the uh, the Dwarven Forge hands-on demo drinking game. Uh, we can make and roll that into Wildlands. So we got some one by one walls, some one by one corners, some one by one floors. So this is all like the fiddly ooh fiddly bits. That's yep, another that's one. <laughs> fiddly bits can be a uh, can be a drink. So we got some diagonal walls. Whoa, more floors. Are, there's gonna be no shortage of floors by the time we're done with this. Uh, actually, maybe there will be a shortage of floors because there's a lot of negative space in here. I don't know. Nothing an under floor pack won't fix those two by one floors. More floors. Ah, oh, this is a good one. Yeah, straight wall. We're definitely getting some black light down here. Straight walls, we're getting a good, good bread and butter. Mm. Another drink, more diagonals. More diagonals. This cascading pool corner looks really cool in under noon. And when we're gonna blast it with a black light in a sec, let's see what happens. Um, People have noted that there are not a ton of plain straight walls included in a lot of the encounters. Uh, and that is by choice. One, I felt like uh, caverns shouldn't have a ton of long straight runs. Two, people had a ton of straight walls, floors and corners already in from their regular cavern sets. Um, and three, we have a, there's a bunch of other ways to make straights, right? You could put two of these rising walls together to make a straight run or two and then put something up between them. You can use the trifecta straight. You can use, we don't have it yet, the door, the door, uh, double door piece works as a straight. Um, you can do two swells. So here's the swell wall. We can take the trifecta swell, put two of those together and that does a straight run. So you go straight, only it keeps going straight. So it's straight without being straight. Um, yeah. Same. Yeah. Uh, let's look at this blast these with, uh, so anyway, there, there was a, there was a rhyme to the, the reason or something like that. Look at that. And the black white, oh, there's a puddle floor. That's a cool one. These things. All right. 
Oh, let's get this. is going to be fun. This is inner box number four. This has... Uh, this has some of the cool elevation-esque pieces. Dun, dun, dun. A little swivelly tip. You can pop that off if you want. And who was it? Uh, Law was posting thing he's been playing with like different ways uh, to have the pieces go together and he posted this one up that he saw which is really nice that this fits really nicely in the convex the uh what is this, the concave curve no convex yeah convex in the cave concave yeah anyway neat little trick thanks a lot um, there are many you know there's so much there's so much crazy geometry we figured out for these i can't even remember all of the like there was a lot of fun compatibility we're figuring out with the mocks. Uh, more rising walls, more of these lump fits. There's like these guys play together in a bunch of fun ways. Um, I can't remember all the bits that we worked out, but there was, uh, you know, we we spent a lot of time trying to play with the geometry to, to really make sure that, that these, especially these organic shapes, right? We want them to uh, give you a lot of neat ways to nestle together. This guy, fun fact, has a, uh, there's a weight in there, there's a tungsten weight in there to help it from tipping over, because it does kind of want to tip a little bit, but nothing in the terrain tray doesn't help fix. Um, get that strength 18 to tip it over. More or less. Those guys, more rising walls, more cliffs. Man, you really, like, there's a lot you could build those. So more cliffs. More cliffs, towering cliffs. Some of these lumps, we got a whole lump full of lumps. Oh, more cliffs. They're just going higher and higher. I don't know what to do with them. Lump. Huh, this guy's in here, that's funny. The, uh, the double door topper's in here, but we don't have yet the double door. Then let's find it. Uh, where is it? This oh, must be in the other box. We didn't open it, I don't think. Huh. Oh, maybe, you know what it's for? This guy, the pregnant passage. See, it's like a little, it's got like a baby bump. It's like a pregnant, that's what we call it, the pregnant passage. Uh, let's go in there. Boom, boom. Hey, you know, speaking of straights, this is another straight wall. Remember we were saying, you know, straights, use that. If you want, you can just pop a uh, insert wall in there and boom, it's another straight. Uh, anyway. All right, we got two more. In here, and then we go to the other box. So we're uh, over the halfway mark. I don't know how many minutes we're in. But... 22. 22 minutes already? Holy moly. Now I gotta pick, this, pick the pace up. All right, we got, ooh. Speaking of inserts, here is Archwell with an insert. There's this cool ramshackle wood, pops in there. Boom, but we want some options. Let's give them some options. We got, ooh. Uh, cool uh, wooden portcullis. Look at that. And 80 is sharp. Yaucho. Uh, and then this is awesome one the Cree secretions. Hag secretions. They're slimy. Whoa. Does that pop with the. Uh, no? It turns you this. It no. doesn't not. It doesn't not pop for sure. That's a good looker. This little guy. And then we've got, ooh, a couple of cave doors. Those doors look nice. And the uh, frames, let's see, you guys, I'm happy with the door. Right there, and that door floor. The uh, the wood, it's really nice, like against the regular caverns, they kind of blend in, because everything's kind of in that same warm family. This, against the purpley blue, the, the wood stuff really pops. So, drop door, okay. Oh, yeah, these guys. Secret door. We got two of them so you can make like your uh, your secret door glasses or whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah, classic. All right, one more, and then we go into, we descend into the second box. This is oh, Entrance Riser Pack. This piece, guess what? I love this piece. <laughs> Another one of my favorites. Drink. Uh, let's go. Boom. It's got this little spacer. Didn't 
do it. Uh, look at that big doofy thing. And then we've got, ooh, comes with an insert wall if you want. Mm. It sort of works as a straight wall-ish, maybe. Uh, didn't need that torch, just dropped it on the ground. All right, we got two little torches. We're gonna pop those in there. Uh, where's the torch? Oh, ah, ah. One, two. Let there be light. Oh, oh the light looks like under black light. Hmm. That's cool. Man, I want to see your black light game. All right, box number two. Yeah. Ooh, it's our order number. That's good. All right. We need a bigger table. Jeez. All right. Look at that. That is a bill. All right. Villain goes at the end. Just to them. And those, 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 those. Hey, oh, yeah. like this. Yeah. So this is a modular table. Only it's taking out boxes. This comes off. We made it for the stop motion um, from Cabin's Deep. You should go check it out. It's called Deadly Astounding Designs. So we made a modular table, and that comes out so you can put another one in so we could film multiple things in a day. So you build, you build on one while you're filming on the other, and then you can swap it out. Because everything here is modular. Modular. Okay, let's look at this natural bridge pack. There we go, quite a collection of them. Alright, so we got this another one of these guys. And this middle guy. And swivel tip over here. That's what they call me. A little swivel tip. And then this cool piece. Look at that big, long, natural bridge. You can use that to bridge whatever. It's so fun. All right. Ooh, three of elevation. We have the hollow elevation block. We've got two of these. I'm going to open them both at once. Uh, this, for whatever reason, I know I've said it before, but I'll say it again. We, uh, we nicknamed it. Ooh, that could be a thing. When we say the nickname of a piece, that could be you take a drink. So the nickname of this piece was a party box, a freaky party box. Um, and I don't remember exactly why we gave it that name, but uh, it's the freaky party box. So what's fun about the freaky party box is you can pop open the lid to reveal the party box. It's hollow all the way through. The idea is I wanted to have like, be able to build like just a bottomless pit that you could go over. Oh, and in service of that bottomless pit, we have a lid. Ooh, these little texture patches. Two little underdoom texture patches. So you can put that under there. And then it looks like it drops into a swirling gunk. You could also, if you want, you can take the lid and use this as uh, rough terrain on, uh, you know, put it on like one of your regular floors and make it rough terrain. Like, you know, you need rough terrain. And also, you know, you can use these just to build like regular. You don't have to have them be hollow or break away or whatever. They're just good, uh, just, you know, yeah. good bread and butter building pieces. Right. Another uh, drink. Maybe I should do a, a video where I have to take a drink every time yes. I do in. one of these things. <laughs> the drinking game. It'll be like an interactive. Tune in uh, for Wildlands. Yeah. Even if we'll you don't want to. put the wild in Wildlands. And, uh, even if you don't want to buy anything, just watch the yeah. videos. <laughs> All right, so we got mushroom walls here. Mm -hmm. mushrooms. So the, the mushrooms that are blue and regular are orange and the underdoom. It's blue. Orange is the new blue. Ooh, look at these vile mushrooms. Let us look. They don't do anything. All right, have a side. Probably nothing. Oh, the Ooh, the mushrooms pop. So these vinyl mushrooms are the same as your regular ones, except the base is underdoom color, and they're slimy and gross and awesome. Um, oh, I love these mushrooms. 
You know, little pops of color. Can't go wrong. So let's see what happened here. So the uh, so funny. Speaking of orange is the new blue. We have um, we have two different kinds of mushrooms. We have blue mushrooms and we have orange mushrooms. And somehow the factory reversed the LEDs. So I believe all of these will have the wrong LEDs. We will send you replacements. Uh, but let's let's take a look and see for ourselves, shall we? They have, look at that. Ooh, they have a little shiny purple finish. I haven't seen that before. That's nice. I like it. All right, cross your fingers. Hope for. Uh... Oh well, I already know it's wrong because they're supposed, supposed to be, be orange. orange. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, that's just a mess. Beautiful shiny purple mushrooms with flickering yellow or just plain yellow. Like I don't know what's going on there. That's uh, disavow all knowledge of these. Didn't do it. Take a drink whenever you say. Somehow the factory. No. Yeah. You know, it doesn't, you know, for the number of pieces, the number of sets we did, it was, uh, it wasn't so bad. Only a few, a few, not as bad as the, uh, the castle catapult debacle, where we, uh, through some confusion, they ended up painting all of the catapults to match the unpainted, partially green stuff, final master. Yeah, that was, that was a thing. But we got everybody the correctly painted ones. So everybody got two catapults out of the deal. Look at all those mushrooms. That is like a, uh, what's a flock of mushrooms called? Like a group of mushrooms. Is it a, is it a banana? It's not an animal. It's, fungus is a whole nother thing, right? Fungi. Maybe a, uh, hmm. yeah. A gloom of mushrooms. I like maybe. that. Yeah. What animal is a gloom? Isn't there one? Oh, okay. Like, I don't know, what's like a depressed animal? <laughs> My initial thought was Eeyore. Yeah. A gloom of Eeyores? Sounds like a plan. <laughs> See, when Selena and I have been down in the Underdoom here, all sorts of, uh, we actually killed time Anything by thinking about these things. All right, double door pack. Let's put that stone door in there. Ooh. Welcome to my lair. Anyway, let's check this out. Love this one. Mm. Gotcha. Neat. All right. Oh, this is that. Remember, that I was saying a double door could be a wall. This is uh, take this. You take that straight wall. Pop a thing in there. Boom. Straight wall. Look at that. More straight walls. We got a lot of options for straight walls for you other than the straight walls. That's why there's not a lot of straight walls. Um, plus, you know, just don't be so straight. Yep. All right, next we've got LED wall paper. This is, we're gonna have, bet, I bet you there's some more mushrooms in here that are crazy colors. Oh no, I lost that bet. I guess I have to take a drink. Um, I forgot this only has torches. Oh, this is it. Look at this thing. Hey, another straight wall option, even though it's not straight. That's sort of You don't straight. sound bitter. It's like, no, no, I'm just trying to explain why there's like, there's not a lot of straight walls. There were so many, so many clever ways to create straightness. Look at that. So that can be with you win. Insert wall, pop that in here. How's it looking in party mode? Yeah, party mode. Um, big six inch wall. And what do we, uh, now, I have zero bitterness about Cavity. It was just a, like, I'm so proud of the thing we made here. And yeah, shipping has been like watching paint dry. Watch our painting tutorials. Uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. And, uh, you know, it's been terrible, but it's there. It's great. We made something. Uh, nobody has a modular cavern set like this. Nobody has backers as awesome as these. Uh, mm -hmm. oh, good. We have a defective unit on the room. Hmm. I don't think I've, I think the, uh, the tap, pull tab, we'll have to pop that open the screwdriver and investigate. Let's see if this one works. So maybe I didn't even pull the pull tab. Maybe it's got buried inside. Hmm. Endless not, possibilities. But you know what? Here's the thing. If you get a defective unit, customer support at dwarvenforge.com. 
Chuck and Michelle or Tyler or Johanna will take care of you. What the heck is going on? This one too? Hmm, this seems strange. Oh, there you go. Ta-da! And this is a three-way switch, so you can turn it that way to turn on this side, you turn it this way to turn on this side. Uh, middle is off. So you can put torches every which way. We're down to, what is three, six boxes. Ooh, oh, we got all sorts of, ah, oh, so many, ah, oh, they're all fun, they're all flashy. I saved all the flashy bits for the end. Okay, let's do it. Transitions. Two pieces, but they're cool. So these are crucial. These, uh, these are transition paint jobs to get you to get you from your regular cabbage paint into the underdoom. So this goes from regular to underdoom. This goes from underdoom to regular. Uh, and I think I think the factory reversed. Could be, I have to double check, but I think this is the one that goes under doom to regular is supposed to be in the crystal caverns, and the one that goes regular to under doom is supposed to be in here, so they got reversed. So if you get both encounter 13 and 14, you're fine, you can swap them. If you don't, we'll send you a replacement, the right one. Uh, when I, we put it in the last update. Um, see what that's out there. So if you, and once again, the moral story is if you find anything that's wrong with your sets, let us know, we will make it right. Uh, cool passage transitions. Ooh, you could also just use these to have like a little pocket of uh, regular stone in your regular underdoom build if for some reason you just wanted like a weird area of some sort of strange activity. Right, let's this is a nice little misty face. More LED fun! Five of these guys. You can have all sorts of teleporting shenanigans. Uh, iPhones hate blue light, so I promise yeah, this looks really cool. That's something about the wavelength. It's like, I don't know. Hey, post in the comments what uh, why iPhones hate blue light. Maybe these are blue glowing gateways. Maybe they're force fields. Maybe they're teleporters. Maybe it's some sort of weird goo. Maybe it's anti-gravity glowing fey water. I don't know. You tell me. What do you think it is? So many. I know we have five of them. Maybe it's too many, but it sure looks cool. You know who's going to love these? My kids. We have not yet unboxed them. All right, now we're starting to get to the, the real meat. This is... I don't know if I've ever said this. This is one of my favorite pieces of the uh, of camera seat. This is, uh, this really is, this is majestic. This, this is the Stairway to Violence, um, which is just, I mean, what? Put that boy right here. Boom! Look at that boy. Or well, maybe it's a lady, because it's got all these beautiful, delicate curves. Um, it's violent. Yeah. <laughs> is there something you want to tell us? <laughs> So we've got a little torch where is that supposed to be? Put the torch there. These guys are meant to uh, conceptually it's it's supposed to sit. This is the original way it's supposed to sit, which is the uh, stalactite and the stalagmite line up. Um, but you can put it any way you want. Wait, let me put this guy here. Uh, there's no wrong way. And it was designed so that you could you could rotate it around and have it sit. Maybe it's sitting like that. Maybe you block off those initial stairs up and do something like that and have this there. Or maybe design it so this could connect really nice like over there. You do something like that or something like that. Or maybe you put a natural bridge just going up like that. There's, I know, there's a lot of... A lot of options. You can also build this in with your elevation blocks if you got a floor. You think you could do a thing like that. There's like, you know what there are? Possibilities. <laughs> so many <laughs> possibilities. Uh, <laughs> Someone please turn that into. Please Photoshop me <laughs> throwing something into his mouth. <laughs> 
right. And then, uh, we're down to the last three boxes here. We've got, this is the Under Doom Adventure. Oh, wait, Adventure Pack. we got to do the second one. That will be the penultimate pack. All right, here we go. We have the Drift Stones. All right. So, we have, oh boy, I can do it. Oh, this is kind of wild. So there are bases. There's six bases on that side, six bases on this side, all on this thing. These are not Dwarvenite, so they are a little fragile. Um, they can break, uh, so I am warning you. I would not put these on a convention table and flip it onto concrete if I were you. Because, uh, yeah, if that happens, I don't think we can replace those, because that would... But, so we have two different heights. There's like a low one and a high one. It is, you put your drift stones on there. Look at this. So we got, wow. Look at this. So there's two different types of drift stones. We have the big ones. We have the little ones. Oh, look how beautiful it is. Shiny, glistening, awesomeness. So the idea is you could put, nice to put there. Be careful when you put them on not to, not to torque this sideways. Like this, you know, you want to put them pretty straight if you can. So you get some different heights with the same. Does it do anything when party yeah. light? Yeah. Nice. So there was the two different heights. You could you get some variety in your uh, how you, these guys are floating. Uh, you could also, you know, if you were something that you could actually just take the stand, do something. It looks kind of like that fortress and crawl something. Yeah. I don't know if you ever saw that. I think it was out before you were. I did born. not. Yeah. I don't. I don't know if it's any good. It was great when I was like twelve or whatever. But I don't know if it's any good now. Yeah. Maybe it doesn't even look like that. I don't know. I can't remember. I feel. I just. I feel like I remember the same thing. Looked like these. But yeah. Look at all these drift stones. These are. These are fun. These are fun. Are you doing that thing you said not to do? Um, I'm, well, I'm putting the forces going down, but then I was rotating. Yeah, just keep the force straight down. Look at that. That is floating drift stones. It's so fun. All right, so then, the penultimate pack here. We've got, you know, things are exciting because we have a remote control. So, that means there's, geez, this thing is wrapped like nine layers. Anyway, there's a little pull tab at the bottom. Here, pull tab, pull the pull tab. Throw it like a grenade. That's how I recommend it. Um, I don't even know where to start. Oh yeah, well there's something good bits here. Okay, so let's start with this because we've maybe seen it in the crystal caverns before. So we have this cool crystal alcove here. So it's got two pull tabs, one on the right and the left, because there's two sets of batteries inside. What? It's so many batteries. The reason is we have ooh, look at all these little, all these little crystals. So we've got Crystals here, which we can insert, do that and that. Well, you know, oh, we're here, let's just put some crystals in here. Oh, and with this, so we put the, uh, the steroid of violence, we put this, um, we inset the, uh, the LED so that it would create these really nice shadows on the uh, overhanging stalactites and the rock around. Kind of make this really neat. Uh, kind of you know, look at the mm. shadows and light. Yeah. And then uh, also one of our design principles in Cavern Steep was claustrophobia and overhang, whatever. So this was sort of accenting that because it's hard to create the sense of overhang and claustrophobia with a thing that has no ceiling. So that's one instance where we did that. Anyway, so you can put those crystals in there. Put the crystals in here. And is this the right one? Let's see. Yeah. So there's two switches on the back. There's a switch on the here, which turns these on and off. Ah. And then there's a switch over here, which flicks this into crazy disco rave under new madness mode. And this is where your remote control comes in handy. You can change your colors. Uh, look at that. Ooh. Let's do, we do this cool like strobe effect. Oh, this one I really like a lot. It's a slow pulse. Boom, boom, boom. And important to note, when your batteries get low, everything just starts flickering crazy red. That means, switch me, switch me, dead battery. Maybe we could just put them in the white mode, get the smooth color change. Oh no, where's the smooth color change? There it is. So it's gonna just go through the rainbow of colors. All right, 
Meanwhile, over here we got a little arch wall. That's good. Hey, here's another way you can make a straight wall. Put that in here, boom, boom, straight wall. Oh yeah, this, straight wall. Hey, where'd that other that plain insert wall go? I don't know. All of our <laughs> insert walls, you put them on a floor and they're a straight wall. Another reason, not so many straight walls. Uh, oh yeah, speaking of insert walls, here we go. It's another low arch, and this is our magnetic wall. What are we gonna put on there? Magnetic chain crystal. And look, it's a straight wall. Um, that thing is neat. Okay, we have two of these. The freestandy, freestandy sockets. These are JST connectors. These will work for uh, all of your previous floor connectors from the Castle Builder system from the Dungeon of Doom. And they have these neat Eldritch eyes we're gonna put on there. Turn it on. Yum. Look at that crazy evil green eye. Whoa, it gets blue in the thing. And that thing has a little breathing uh, chip, I think. I think it breathes, let's see. Does it breathe? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. These creepy. Uh... And if you look up, uh, if you look in our Doom's Compendium of Pain PDF, you can see some game ideas of what kind of effects you could have from these creepy eyes. Look at those things, tentacles and everything. Mm. You can put these anywhere. Maybe they want to go up here. Mm -hmm. Maybe one goes there. Maybe goes here. Yeah, they're just, they're up to no good. Um, and finally, to round out our LED magnet. So gross. Isn't that gross? Love it. We have our 4x4 LED vessel floor. And this once again has two tabs because there's two batteries in here. There's one for white light and one for flickering yellow light and give you options. And this is the underdoom paint. You can tell by the green bits. Woo, party! Let's turn on the light and see what it looks like. All right, so then our last two pieces in here wow. are, we have two of this is a, I forget what we called this. This was like, um, it's not the surfboard. Grimornis, no, Grimornis surfboard was in the last pack. This is like the pedestal or something. I can't remember what it was. Crazy, Grimornis crazy pedestal. So it's supposed to have this weird, um, these sort of like weird organic spiky bits coming off it. Like the bottom. So what's neat about this, uh, I might need a blade for it. You can take your floor here. This, uh, this clear crystal here is just held in with just tight fit. You pop that thing up. Ooh, remove this, maybe this becomes like, I don't know, an ice flow or, look at that iridescence, ooh. Or something cool, weird crystal piece, whatever. Then you take this guy, and it's designed to fit the exact same footprint. So it fits perfectly there and then is illuminated by this. So let's change it to like, so it's a pretty cool effect with all the uh, effect, reflecting light and whatnot. What's, that's a crazy sound. There's aliens coming from the ceiling. Hmm. Uh, maybe it's a <laughs> okay. sign if we run our course here. Uh, and you can also just put any of like your floor cover pieces on here or whatever. If you want to get more light out of them, also you can take this off. It does kind of deflect and refract light and kind of move around. Basically, you could take it off if you want more direct light. But I recommend. <laughs> wow. Jesus. It's a good thing this Dwarvenite's nearly indestructible. Turn it onto a concrete floor, unfazed, unharmed. All right, that's a cool look. Two of those. In case you want to see. Ooh, let's put this up here. Oh, yeah, look at that. And actually, what we did in this thing, in the build, is we have this on top of this for, like, weird floaty shenanigans. All right. Uh, and our last pack, the villains pack. Dun, dun, dun. All right, what do we have in here? Ooh. So, oh, so many things to start with. Okay, let's start with these things. Wow. Okay, oh, ah. Oh, 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 oh. So many guns. So many guns. Uh, we don't, you know what we didn't give people? Uh, we didn't give people the golf tee. The little trap removal tool. Mm. Um, oh, man, the metal came off. Mm. So this is our gibbering mouther pit. How gross is that? I recommend slathering it with some like clear nail polish or something to give it like some really slobbery grossness. 
and then there's a false floor lid that goes over it that you can use um, uh, to level it out to the same height as the floor, so it should look just like a regular floor. Uh, and then if you have one of our trap removal tools, it looks like a golf tee, there's metal on the inside there, so you can remove it from, oh, you know what you could use? Do we have a strong enough magnet? This one's got a strong magnet. Oh yeah, you can uh, you can use one of your <laughs> you can use one of your other anchor manga pieces. You pop that on there, and it, you can lift it off to, when it's in the build to reveal the trap that's laying in wait. Uh, finally, yeah. Ooh. so we have uh, this is Gramorna's driftstone. She is a beer 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 hag. I don't know. Eli speaks Middle Welsh, of course, or and uh, told me how it correctly pronounced B H E U R. It's like, but it's, it's just a beer hag. So she's all frosty. So this is her personal drift stone. That's why it's coated with uh, ice. And we also nicknamed this piece, uh, nicknamed the piece, take a drink. Uh, this is Grimana's surfboard because she like floats around on it and like surfs around and gets up to no good. Up on there. Uh, Oh, and there she is. Look at that, look at her that gross tongue hanging out of her mouth. So I'm hunched over. She's pretty nasty with her gray, her gray staff. It gives her all of her power. Yeah. She's, uh, she's not much of a dresser either. <laughs> I think it's human skin. All right, so then we have these two cool necrotic tendrils. These are sludge tendrils to be when they you know, when they're cruising around in this, uh, oh, wait, this, one. this necrotic sludge here, of course it's going to come after them. So these are tendrils of the necrotic sludge that can reach out and kind of chase them and call them. So neat. Love those things. They're kind of like a weirdo chicken foot sludge, something. Uh, Felipe did some wild art for that. And, uh, yeah, cool. And then this guy, the final, this is it. This is the last of the Mohegans. The final, final, final piece. All the end of the line. Get it out here. So this is uh, the, the Orgrim Jarl riding astride his Arctic phalanx. Yes, this phalanx, it has no relation whatsoever to any sort of copyrighted six-legged feline with tentacles out of its back. Uh, nope, just it's an arctic phalanx with armor. It's got kind of a battle cat armor on it from He-Man. It's like, oh, I love this guy. And there's a the unmounted version of him in Encounter 6, the Covert War Camp. So you've got a mounted and unmounted version of the Orgrim. Yarl, Ansar the Yarl, and uh, we had a bunch of other Yargum, but they never made the cut. They've been waiting since Dungeon of Doom to get sculpted. Maybe in Wildlands they will finally have their day. Only time will tell. Ooh. And that's it. Look at this this bounty of underdoomediness. Ah, I feel so so overwhelmed with it. We we need to get back deep under the earth for this. Ah, underdoom. Enjoy your bounty of devious dungeon pieces. Ah! Ender Doom. Look at all these lights. This is the best. All right, that's it. Enjoy. It's like four. Oh, wait, there's a secret thing at the end. Um, the secret thing in the end, if you've watched this, you have to say, uh, I don't know, what do they say, Selena? What's a good uh, um, secret phrase? How about. Um, great. Something about Grey Morna surfboard, like uh, hang 10 with Grey Morna. <laughs> Hang 10 with Grey Morna. I'll hang 10 with Grey Morna any day. <laughs> Boom. Great. That's, there it is. Sold. Ship it. We'll Commented. see you in the last one. Dread Hollow is next, and then we're done with unboxing. Bye. Bye.